Hello, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. I am the host of this house. And the reason I look like a My Little Pony Bunny or something is that today, in case you aren't aware, was supposed to be Take Your Kid to Work Day, which is kind of every day for a lot of us now. They're originally, you know, planning to rename it this year, Take Your Kids to the Breakfast Nook for a Zoom meeting with no pants on day. But they decided to leave it alone. So to bring my daughter to work, my daughter, Jane, did my makeup tonight. You gonna do it? Eyeshadow. <laughs> Eyeshadow, uh-oh. Eyeshadow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> you should look at yourself when you're done, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm, I will. Do I look beautiful? <laughs> you look like a girl. <laughs> what do you think, Guillermo? Do I look like a girl? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. You look beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guillermo. And thank you, Jane, who knew my color palette was Jolly Rancher. Tonight was also round one of the NFL draft. You know, it was supposed to be a big live event in Vegas, but because of the virus, they did a virtual draft with the players and the teams making picks from home, like a fantasy draft. The most interesting part was watching a bunch of 75-year-old billionaire team owners trying to figure out how to boot up their laptops. But it was nice to have some kind of current sports programming to watch. People don't know what to do with themselves right now, but it's important, if you can, to find small ways to maintain your normal routine, like this gentleman from New York did at a parking lot. What? I'm not putting the window down. I got here first. This is my parking spot. I'm not moving. You, go somewhere else. Leave me the alone. It's not my problem that you went around. I beat you to it. I took the shortcut. This is my spot, and I'm not moving my car. You. Goodbye. There's nobody there. I miss the days when I argued with someone over a parking spot. I miss the good old days. <laughs> I like that a lot. Sometimes you just have to scream. Use it or lose it is the thing. Speaking of screaming New Yorkers, President Trump is on quite a roll contradicting his own infectious disease experts almost every day on his daily televised temper tantrum. Here's how it goes. The president says this. I understand that the United States will certainly be more prepared in the fall, but how can you say that you know it won't come back in the same level that it has today? What it is estimated might not come back at all, Jeff. It may not come back at all. And then later in that same press briefing, Dr. Fauci says this. We will have coronavirus in the fall. I am convinced of that. Okay, now I don't know who to trust. Here's the thing, folks. Our president is a contradict head. Trump also trotted out the director of the CDC, Dr. Robert Redfield, who told the Washington Post, we may have an even more devastating round of the virus coming. That warning did not go over well with the president, who immediately tweeted that the doctor was misquoted and then marched him up to the podium to try to get him to say, I was misquoted. You were accurately quoted, correct? I'm accurately quoted in the Washington Post. As, as difficult, but the headline was What does the headline say? What does the headline say? Well, the, 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 headline, uh, the headline says, CDC director warns second wave of coronavirus is likely to be even more devastating. And isn't that it's correct? Not what he said. It's not what he said. Why did you retweet the article if it's inaccurate? Doctor, why did you retweet it? You were involved. <laughs> so, so that went well. These poor doctors working for Trump, if they don't give us the truth, they're not doing their jobs. But if they do tell the truth, there's a good chance he'll fire them. So their only option is to play dumb and hope Trump gets distracted by a filet of fish or something. And this guy, Dr. Redfield, had he not tried to accommodate Trump, he would have been forced to go back to his original job as an Amish stock photo model. See, this is what happens if you don't play loose with the facts. We learned yesterday that Team Trump demoted the doctor in charge of finding a vaccine for the virus. Dr. Rick Bright was involuntarily transferred from his post because he raised orange flags about the president's claim that an untested drug, hydroxychloroquine, could help treat the virus. Early testing seems to indicate that it does not help. Dr. Bright spoke up about this in meetings, and now he is gone. I'm not sure what's more depressing, that our president demoted a doctor who's trying to prevent Americans from trying an ineffective drug that could kill us, 
or that we're not even remotely surprised that he did. But the president only wants the best people. And this headline, I think, does a good job of summing it all up. Former Labradoodle breeder was tapped to lead U.S. pandemic task force. That's <laughs> real. They hired a guy who bred Labradoodles to lead the team. How does that happen? Do they go through his resume and they see the word lab and then say, well, he's obviously qualified. Harrison has no formal education in public health, management, or medicine. So Trump was like, perfect. How soon can you start? Oh, well, maybe we, at the least we can get him to train Mike Pence to stop humping the president's leg. Am I still wearing the makeup? Yeah, okay. Tomorrow, the state of Georgia will reopen for business. Gyms, fitness centers, bowling alleys, hair salons, beauty salons, massage therapists, cosmetology schools, tattoo parlors, and body piercing studios will be allowed to open their doors to customers. And I think that's great. That is just what we need right now. I don't know about you, but I haven't had my penis pierced in weeks. The governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp is going ahead with this plan. Why, no one seems to know. Even their crazy next-door neighbor, Florida, hasn't opened for business yet. It's nuts. We're cracking under pressure. According to the Associated Press, a lot of parents have now reached the breaking point when it comes to homeschooling their kids, and some are just giving up on it. And that's a shame. So I think maybe we should change course. Maybe we should revert to a little house on the prairie-style education. None of our kids need fractions right now. I say it's time to teach them to churn butter. You know, if you search the word homeschool on Twitter, you can get a sense of what's going on. Here are some tweets. Homeschooling is just standing behind your kid, checking their math on your phone calculator. Another, if I died tomorrow, my fourth grader's last memory would be of me yelling at her about the St. Louis Arch. And this one gets right to the point. There is a hell, it's called homeschooling. I get it. It's hard to go to school again, but don't give up hope, moms and dads, because our pal Guillermo has a new service providing homework assistance for those who need it to run and get your workbooks because it's time for a homework corner with Guillermo. Hello and welcome to Homework Corner with Guillermo. Today's problem is solve for A. Three times A equals 20. So that will be... That will be three times three times A. Wait. Three times three times six. Eighteen. And then we forget about all the two. <laughs> so it can be. So it can be 18 if we can have two. <laughs> well done, Guillermo. I give you a B plus.